Hey everybody, it's Allie. I'm on a fantabulous weight loss journey and hopefully you'll come along for the ride. So I'm gonna switch things up today. Today we're gonna be reading a post from one of the support groups and I'm gonna give you my two cents on this. Now, I wanna start out by saying that everybody should always try to be positive in a support group, right? I mean, that's the whole point of a support group. At the same time, I do think that a level of honesty is very important, especially for people who are just starting out on a GLP-1 medication, who are new to everything, right? And for people like myself who have done extensive, extensive research it can be challenging to see posts like this and not respond. And don't you worry because I did and I'm gonna read it to you. This person said, dear people who are jerks to everyone in this group, just shush. Stop telling people that you have to diet and count calories and all the things and then telling them they won't keep the weight off if they don't. It's not helpful especially when talking to a group who's clearly not had large success with diets in the past. To be completely honest, it's none of your business. My experience has been great. I don't do anything extra. And it's so wonderful to not be obsessed with food for the first time in my life. Kudos for that. To all the people who know what I mean, just live. Let your brain rest and reset. Prepare for maintenance and what real change looks like when you're ready. Don't let anyone ruin the experience for you. Down 20 pounds and I don't count nothing. Don't stress about anything. Eat what I want and drink what I want and I'm allowing my brain to heal and rest from all the constant BS I've lived with my entire life around food. So, this person makes um, a couple of very good points. Again, it's a support group. We wanna be supportive of people. Definitely the just live, let your brain rest and reset. I for one can absolutely relate to that. This medication has been very freeing to not be constantly thinking about food, to not be, you know, obsessed about the next time that you're going to eat or planning, you know, meals and, and all. Just if you want to know more about my personal struggles, go watch my food noise video. So I can absolutely relate to that. And I get the gist of what they're going for. But I also think that this person is very early on in their journey and they have a long way to go. And so I wanted to kind of take a second and, and read my response because I really did just kind of lay it out for them. So I said, playing devil's advocate here, which is what I do. I said, come back to this post when you've lost 100 pounds, insurance kicked you off the meds, and you can't afford to pay out of pocket. So this, this point really drives it home for people who have been on this medication for any length of time, either during the shortage or during the shortage last year, or they're struggling with their insurance companies either right now or previously. I mean, I just read a post from another woman um, in another support group who was talking about how because of the shortage, she's been without her medication for two months and she's already gained back half of the weight that she had lost and she's devastated, right? So uh, I'm kind of trying to put it in perspective here that while yes, it is a healing journey and you should do those things, there are a large chunk of people who are just under the misconception that they can function this way by not eating healthy, eat whatever they want, 
eat less because of the appetite suppression, which doesn't necessarily mean they're in a deficit. And, you know, that, that everything's going to be okay in the end. And if time has proven anything, it's that these employers and these insurance companies who are essentially dictating our lives based off of these medications, they don't want to have to pay for it. They are putting all sorts of limits and, you know, like limits on the coupon, limits on the, they were just talking about it in the Eli Lilly um, quarterly call that I was on yesterday, how, you know, they were talking, the investors were talking about, you know, well, what about the money? And Eli Lilly's like, well, don't worry, because we got rid of the coupon. You know, like, people can't seem to wrap their heads around It's, it's not a given. It's not a, it's not a blood pressure medicine. It's not a, um, birth control. Like you, you're not just going to blanketly get it and your insurance company is going to be like, oh yeah, sure. We'll just pay for this forever. Like all of these people who have all these different diagnoses, PCOS, insulin resistance, diabetes, which I am uh, a diabetic, um, you know, uh, autoimmune diseases, sleep apnea, kidney issues, heart issues. I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on. All of these people on this medication, GLP-1s in general, like insurance companies don't want to have to pay for it. They don't want to have to reimburse pharmacies. Pharmacies have started to stop carrying it. They're using using this shortage as a means to eliminate these customer bases from their pharmacies because they're tired of getting gypped by insurance and pharmaceutical companies. Anyway, I don't want to get off on this tangent. So... Come back to this post when you've lost 100 pounds, insurance kicked you off the meds, and you can't afford to pay out of pocket. The other reason why I made this point, and it is um, admittedly slightly judgmental on my part, and I'm just going to be open about the bias, um, looking at this person's pictures, it it does not appear to me, now these could be old pictures, but it does not appear to me that they are morbidly obese. And while I understand that everyone wants to get to a healthy body and no one's condition is more important than someone else's, right? Because you'll hear diabetics say all day long, I wish we could just get rid of these weight loss people because you know, they're taking up the med that I need. I, I'm not one of those people. But I am saying there is a different perspective and a different mindset of somebody who only needs to lose 40 pounds versus somebody who has to lose 120 pounds, right? It's, it's different. It's you're in it for the long haul. It takes more out of you. So not saying that one is more important than the other. So please don't misunderstand me and don't misquote me. Um, but I, I am saying that if, if you're going to make blanket statements, like, like you can do nothing and be perfectly fine on this medication, which is part of what this person is saying, then I, you know, I mean, you run the risk of, right, somebody who's bigger than you taking that advice. And, and that's the challenge of support groups, right? Because not everybody's going to research. There are a lot of people that make dangerous recommendations about diet and restricting calories. And I don't recommend that you listen to those people. But there are people who do, you know, because they don't know any better. Okay. So, 
um, come back when your insurance kicks you off the meds and you can't afford to pay out of pocket. That's the other thing. Um, this person has not been on this medication long enough to understand the stress and the panic that comes with the realization that you may have to pay out of pocket for this medication, whether it's name brand at, you know, 500 to $1,500 a month, or if you're going to go compounded, you know, which could be anywhere from 200 to $500 a month. Um, not everybody has that kind of disposable income. So just a little food for thought. Um, the hunger returns with a vengeance and it's difficult to manage for even those who are counting calories and exercising. I have seen uh, a plethora of videos coming out. People crying, people stressed, people freaking out because they've been off the medication just because of the shortage. Not because their insurance has booted them. Just because of the shortage. And they are painfully gaining the weight back because of the medical conditions that they may have. And again, many of them are counting calories and exercising. So again, just trying to put things in perspective. Come back when you've stalled for months and insurance boots you for not losing enough weight. This is a new one, especially for all of the people who are on the weight loss versions of these medications. Um, insurance companies are really cracking down on how much weight is lost, you know, in between doctor's visits. So, um, and I, and I talk about that in another video. Should people be kind? Yes, of course. Is the truth hard? Also, yes. And some people don't have an honest support system at home. I collect a lot of info when I research in these groups, and some of you are newer to this med, so I will share with you. The majority of people, 8 out of 10, who gain the weight back have posted the same mindset at some point in their journey. Now, this is um, part of the research that I've done for myself. Basically, what happened was, you know, everybody started freaking out about the study that came out that said, you know, that 80% of the people um, who come off of this medication gain all the way back. And everybody was in a panic. And I was like, how could that be? It completely blew my mind. I was like, no, that doesn't make any sense. How could that happen? And then I went to the support groups and I started to research and I began to understand that there is a very large number of people who have this mindset, who treat this like a magic pill, who don't do any exercise, who just rely on appetite suppression and eat less and lose weight and they think, well, this is the easiest thing ever. And then for any number of reasons, they get booted off the medication. They can't get it because of shortage, right? The list goes on and on and on. For whatever reason, they can't get the medication. And then what happens? They start gaining the weight back. And then they're in a panic, right? So that's what my research showed me. And it was really eye-opening to me because to me, from my point of view, and it's just, just my point of view, you're having to do all that work and spend all this money. And some of these people are paying out of pocket for name brand. Very expensive, every month. Why wouldn't you do everything you could possibly do to lose weight in a healthy way, heal your relationship with food, learn correct portion sizing, which I'm not going to lie, for most of us is really hard to do without counting calories. Unless you get one of those plates like I've shown before, where it shows you the different portions, right? You can get one of those, um, they have them 
in various sizes. So like the bariatric patients, they get the ones that are the very small plate, right? So unless you're doing something like that, so you can start to train your brain to visually see the smaller portions. If you're not counting calories, it's like, how are you doing it? Because saying I do what I want, I eat what I want, I eat less because I'm on this medication. What happens when you remove the medication from that equation? Well, what happens is that the majority of those people gain the weight back. And, and I'm not saying that to be mean. And I'm not saying that to scare anybody. I am saying it to be honest with you about the research that I've conducted. If you're looking for something easy, I mean, you'll get it. But by God, you better hope that your insurance is willing to pay for that medication forever and that you don't get hit with a shortage. Because then what are you going to do? You know? So, 8 out of 10 people who gain the weight back have posted this mindset at some point in their journey. Either in a post or in a comment. Because I research everything. I'm not saying that you have to count calories for life. I always drive this home. But it can be a helpful tool for those who overeat or eat calorie-dense foods. That was me. Can you lose weight without a healthy diet? Can you lose weight without a healthy diet, not a fad diet, and exercise on this med? So no diet, no exercise. Yes, people do it every day. Is that sustainable long-term if you suddenly don't have the med to rely on? No. For the majority of people, no. Now, could this person be one of the two out of the 10 who can? Sure. I find that most of those people um, rely, they fall back on extreme dieting, extreme calorie restriction, extreme exercising, right? That, that's what those people end up doing. Not all of them, but from what I've found, that's usually the case because they're desperate to hold on to that weight loss. So I said, you will find out, right? If you don't suddenly don't have access to the med, you're, you're going to have a new understanding of how it affects you. Kindness is key. Everyone has to find their own way. So do I like it when people are like, well, you're just going to gain the weight back. No, of course not. Uh, you know, like this original poster said, that's not helpful for anyone. And um, my first tactic when providing support to somebody who's asking for help, mind you, I do not give, you know, like just straight up unsolicited advice unless the person is just horribly misinformed. Then I'll say, hey, just so you know, um, you know, that's problematic or, you know, I'll, I'll give them another point of view. But um I lost my train of thought. I have regained my train of thought. <laughs> so is it helpful to just be harsh with people? No. Do I think that most who give that advice or give that warning are trying to be harsh? Also, no. Um, I think that a lot is lost by way of, you know, reading text on a screen, whether it's your phone or on a computer. Um, I think that there's a lot of nuance that's lost in not having like a conversation. Um, you know, this person may read my comment and, and feel like I'm negative, I'm attacking them, I'm, you know, which is not my intent. But I am giving honest feedback and saying, hey, you 
are just starting out in your journey. And I completely understand where you're coming from because that feeling of freedom is amazing. And there are some people who take that freedom from food and they go, you know what? I'm gonna use this as an opportunity to change my diet, to eat a healthy, well-balanced diet. I'm not gonna go on some crazy fad diet. I'm gonna heal my relationship with food. I'm gonna exercise and move my body and get the blood pumping because it's gonna make me healthier long-term. And the goal is to be a healthier version of me. And with that comes weight loss. And then there are other people who will say, woohoo, I'm free, I'm free. I'm free, I'm free at last. I don't have to think about food. I can eat whatever I want. I'm gonna go to the restaurant, order whatever I want. I don't have to think about calories. I'm just gonna be spending all my money. Bring me the alcoholic drinks. Bring me the calorie dense food. Bring me everything. I'm just gonna eat small portions. And they like go off the rails. And those people often post pictures of what they're eating. And other people will go, hey, whoa. That's probably not a good idea. And some people are nasty about it. Don't get me wrong. I mean, that that is the gist of Facebook, right? You're, you're going to get people that are just nasty to you for no reason. It, it, it comes with social media in general. Um, at the same time, there are people like myself who try very hard to give sound research-based advice without a lot of sugar coating, without a lot of fluff, but still deliver it in a kind and succinct manner. And I don't want people like myself, because there were quite a few of us in the comments on that post, to get lumped in with all the meanie weenies who are out there going, well, you're gonna gain the weight back. You're gonna be Fatty McFit Fat. Me, me, me. I know, Sega. I know. It's terrible. People are mean. Good girl. So anyway, don't don't lump us all together. Some some people do give good advice and have good intentions, and sometimes that advice does not line up with what everybody else is saying. And you know, a, a lot of times people who are on that high of just starting out, they've lost 20 pounds, they're starting to feel better, they're starting to move easier, they're starting to really understand why the rest of us who've been on this for a while are going, this is amazing, right? They're just coming into that. And it can feel like, oh, great, here we go, another Debbie Downer. When somebody says, hey, let's let's work on that, that healthy diet. Make sure you're exercising. Prioritize protein. Stay hydrated. Are you counting calories? If not, maybe that's why you're not losing weight, right? We're not saying it to be mean. We're saying it because we understand. We've been in your shoes. So that's it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, give me a thumbs up and comment down below and let me know are you incorporating a healthy diet? Be honest. Are you just winging it and eating whatever you want? Comment down below 
and let me know and let me know how it's working out for you. It's it's always interesting to me to see these people who have lost 60, 70, 80, 100 pounds and have done absolutely nothing. It's always interesting. So thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. And as always, be kind. Rewind.